scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In the name of Jesus and for whole families who have come here asking, will God visit us? Let me answer you in advance. God will not only visit you, he will surprise you. You believe that shout a louder amen. amen hallelujah praise the name of the lord i'm sensing that someone is being healed from peptic ulcer peptic ulcer i don't know who that is but the power of god is coming on someone who has suffered peptic ulcer this is what i just got that that impression in my spirit you have suffered particularly peptic ulcer. This has caused a lot of, of discomfort. This is someone you know you have it. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be healing for you now. Amen. Let there be healing for you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone coughing throwing up something i don't know what it is but this is what i'm seeing this is like something demonic in that person's body in the name of jesus wherever you are every planting that is not by my god i command that demonic planting whatever it is let it be uprooted from your body now you believe that shout a louder amen Praise the name of the Lord. I thought I would announce it later, but I saw this in my... I was just praying very briefly, in fact, while preparing. And I don't know if it's inside or outside, but there's someone you came with a walking aid, like a crutch. I just saw that vision now, again, repeated. I want you to lift it and stand up. Whether you're outside, you're your crutch, your walking aid, lift it and begin to walk. Whether you are outside any of the overflows, please lift it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Walk. Walk. Walk right to the front. Don't be afraid. Walk. No, I have seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to His work until Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. I'm still seeing people outside. The Lord is showing me miracles happening outside. Crutches, crutches, miracles. I'm seeing this outside. Please don't force them. Just make sure they are strengthened. Hallelujah. Particularly outside. If they are not able to stand, just give them somewhere to sit. But this is what God is doing. Don't be afraid. We're not, we're not acting it here. 
Hallelujah. Number two, there is somebody who came here. Um, I'm seeing, I don't know if it's a neck, a neck, a, a neck, a collar, or something to support yourself. You could not move your neck. This is what I'm seeing. Move it now. Come. Please check yourself. Whether you are inside or outside. Don't be afraid. <laughs> check your neck. Your, if you could not move your neck, please move it now. Move it now. You could not move your neck whether you're inside or outside. Please let's have a few officials. There should be one of the ministers outside so that you help manage those outside. Any of them so that you don't just um, punish people for nothing. Make sure that people are touched and healed. Hallelujah. In this miracle, in this ministry, we're not only, there is a grace called the walking of miracles. Hallelujah. The walking of miracles is not just people healed who will be announced. You will watch it happen as it is happening. It's, it's the walking of miracles. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm seeing somebody who has been, is it coughing out? This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Coughing out blood consistently will soon be seated but i just saw this in my vision and the lord wants to heal that person right now right now coughing out blood all of you please lift your lift the crutches whatever it is that you came with already god has done what happened to you madam can someone help her please don't leave her standing she looks yes i had two hip replacements um i'm uh, an ss patient and I came here for the Lord to change my um, genotype from SS to AA. And it's been causing all these problems. Not sure I, I got what she's saying. Someone um, help. I'm an SS patient. Sickle oh, you're an SS anemia. sickle cell anemia. Yes. Oh, sir. dear. And I have had two hip replacements on the same. You've had two hip replacements? On the same leg. On the same right leg. How long has this been? This is uh, the second one will happen on 25th of November, 21. And I'm still working with the stick. Maybe and you believe Jesus to heal you? Sure, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. You can hear me, yes? Look at me. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I bring you life. Life to your limbs. Life to your body supernatural strength right now in the name of Jesus you want to walk try walking go ahead yes stand by hand guide her two hip replacements look at what Jesus is doing how about you my dear what happened to you accidents on the same legs uh, several times you've had accidents on the same leg severally like 10 times can you see how you can see how satanic this is do you think this is a coincidence over 10 times the, they have done surgery twice but the the, the bone is lying parallel parallel it is not joining it's, it's not joining yeah. look at me you believe in Jesus Look at me. Don't worry about what you're holding. Go, walk. Lift it up and walk. <laughs> My dear, do this gently, carefully. Are you watching a miracle happen here? Look at this. She was even afraid to do it. Before. You couldn't do it before? Yes. My Lord. Hallelujah. What, what happened to you? I had, I, had, I had a sudden I fell and broke my Please bone. stand up. In the name of Jesus, let me rebuke the spirit of accident. 
everyone here please listen and be very sensitive to prophecy I'm praying prophetically over everyone here if there is any programming of darkness that you will be a victim of accidents let it be cancelled here permanently let it be cancelled here permanently let it be cancelled here permanently in the name of Jesus Christ very touched by their stories how do you have accidents in the same place so many times more than 10 times yes ma i'm listening to you and the the lab bone got broken so there was no money for me to go for, for surgery but last year september i went for surgery you went oh you are the woman who gave a testimony here no okay i went for surgical operation and they operated but this right leg is already shortened but they say they will still do another operation to straighten the bones. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be a supernatural miracle right now. In Jesus' name. Would you want to walk? Move. Koinonia, celebrate what Jesus is doing. Now, I use these three people as a point of contact. That in the name of Jesus, everything that is broken, damaged, that needs a supernatural replacement, let it be replaced right now. Let it be replaced right now. In the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they return back to their seats. Hallelujah. Let me just minister to one more, one, one group of people that the Lord is showing me here. I'm seeing someone who, I don't know if it's that you pass out, like you literally faint, it's a situation where you feel dizzy, and then, I mean, you can feel weak, sometimes you can pass out. Is there someone like that very quickly? When, if I do mention your case and you are, you know, that is your case, please do indicate very quickly so we don't waste time. We have a lot to do. This is what God is showing me. Someone who just gets dizzy, whether you are outside or inside, you can indicate so that you come out here very quickly. Very, very quickly. That's your situation? H how long? For let, like, um, let them come. Three years now or For, more. Okay. How about you, my friend? Where are you from? I'm from Edo State. Okay. As a matter of fact, three Sundays ago, I passed that while I was ministering on the altar. You were ministering? You were a pastor? Yes, sir. And you, you fell down? Yes. They had to give me water, but to the glory of God, I still finished the message. But is that not... You see several people outside? Our mother here, how long, madam? My own is often, always, small thing like I used to go out to preach. I'm a pastor also. Are you seeing, are you see what the devil is doing now? I used to go out for preaching, small thing yes. from here to here. I will, my body will be, it's like I will faint, I will fall down. So I will stop preaching. I will go back home. Let me hear from this woman, this mama. Sister, I'm having high BP and I have from my waist to down. No work at times. I'll be feeling this. I cannot do anything. You see, the thing I love about the Lord is with one revelation, He can solve several people's problems just like that. How do you come and what you are seeing out of the many cases here is people who are passing out or being weak or all of these kinds of things. I'm about to pray for you. This is a miracle service. Our assignment is to end the workings of darkness. You can see how the devil is trying to disgrace and embarrass pastors, disgrace and embarrass people. This mother is saying that she goes out for evangelism. That is not a good portrait of the... That is not a good marketing system for Jesus. When you are ministering and you pass out on stage, it's like the devil trying to bring mockery to what you are saying. Hallelujah. 
Let me pray for you now. Place your hand on your chest. Let me rebuke that devil. I can assure you and give you this information for free that a spirit is behind it. In the name of Jesus, even as the Lord has revealed, I stretch my hands over everyone here and every spirit, every demonic force that is behind this, this, this situation, I speak as one sent by God. In the name of Jesus, let God's people go now. Out of their lives now. Let God's people go now. Whether inside or outside, release them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you, every one of you, be healed from these seizures now. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for this woman, this fair mother. I'm seeing the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I'm not a prophet of doom, mama, don't be afraid. But I command that devil to release you now. Out of her now. I shall not die. Play the strings for me. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I shall not die, but leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. You're a man of God, a pastor yes, with your own church? No, sir. You are under a ministry? Not yet, sir. I was in, I go for outreaches. I have a healing outreach. I go. I visit different hospitals. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. I don't know you, but there is a mighty anointing. God is going to use you very mightily. Stand up. Two things. You have to manage. You see, when it has to do with ministry, you have to trust God for grace to choose the right association. Good people can be destroyed with the wrong association. Are we together now? Yes. And, and this is already a prophetic word, maybe for a man of God. You are as good as your association, not just your heart. You can be a sincere man of God intending to do ministry with integrity, but join yourself with wrong chariots and wrong people who will begin to push you to do things that at the end of it, you will find out that it is not Christ you are revealing. But let me pray for you because God is put, I know that we are here to pray for this issue, but in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. What's your name? Are you a pastor? Yes, sir. Marvelous. Yes, sir. Who is Marvelous? I'm the one. What is your name? Full names. Ezra Wele Marvelous. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Marvelous. May the Lord do wonders through your life. Amen. You will do ministry with integrity Amen. and the Lord will use you mightily. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Please place your hand on this lady, this one wearing a black, anyone, ushers, just place your hand on her. In Jesus' name, I command this spirit that is holding this girl's destiny, release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that every plague of darkness and of sickness, recurrent sicknesses, what God says to one, he's saying to everybody, if there is anybody here with a plague of recurrent sickness, I declare be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ, please return to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. Be seated for a few minutes. The miracle service is already on. Hallelujah. Okay, let me respond to this now. You see, the thing about the water has been stirred is that once it is stirred, it's stirred. There is a family God is showing me. Nobody is working. One of you got a job, but they drove the person away eventually. Where is that family? It's, it's like there is a spirit. Intelligent people love God, but it looks like nobody is working. No job. Please make sure you listen to what I'm saying before you come out. You belong to that case, please come out quick. Your word is coming right now. Come out quick.
nobody in your family is working please listen to the prophetic word and for one of you you got a job but for some reason I'm seeing that this is this is a wicked manifestation of the activities of ancestry come you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you so we coming from my friend this man I'm from Benway State sir Benway State yes, sir. I want to pray for you ah, God is going to visit people today yeah. honestly listen I want you to believe that as I speak over your life believe that you will return with a testimony yeah. hallelujah you see so many people there will be a rain of jobs I want to pray for you there is an anointing that I want to release upon your life and you will marvel. You heard the testimony of that woman. If someone is America, this is a PhD woman who is there struggling opening boxes and a prophetic word comes, she puts her prayer request and now she's working with Jeff Bezos. What is it that God cannot do in the name of Jesus? Let me pray for those in front, but you can stand maybe for your loved one. You can stand for someone you know who loves God with all their heart, but it looks like these doors have not been opened. In the name of Jesus, those of you in front here, I'm going to declare an anointing upon you. A mighty anointing will come upon you and you will return with your testimony. Right now at the count of three, those in front, I, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare supernatural jobs. I break the circles of stagnation, career stagnation. I command those circles be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. I release supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, for some of you, it will not be up to three days from today. Write it down. I'm telling you by the God who sent me, my God will surprise you. Applications that you may have written for years that no one has called you over in the name of Jesus will schedule favor on that wise for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone I'm seeing here, you work with civil defense. Civil defense, you are not part of civil defense. Is there someone like that? I just got a prophetic word. The Lord is telling me you are up the balcony. You are somewhere in the balcony. Please verify. You work with civil, who is that person? Run, because a door, a mighty door is about to open for you. I will pray for you but the person I'm seeing you are wearing like lime or green up the balcony I know what I'm saying just listen to me is there someone like who is that where were you sitting let's organize this now please um, some of the leaders please Please bring her to the front. Let me talk to you. My dear, give her the mic. Look at me. You had a dream some time ago and you saw this thing. Yes, sir. If I'm lying. Huh? This afternoon. What happened? I saw myself like an award in the office. 
I want to pray for you because what God is about to do in your life will surprise you. Oh, that's why you came with your ID card. That's why I brought my, I told my friend sitting here, the lady of purple, I told her this afternoon. Where is the friend? Her, look at her. I told her of the dream this afternoon. If you are not the friend, don't come here, please. Let's, please, please. Huh? Okay, don't worry. For sake of time, give me the ID card. Let me tell you the truth. Koinonia, hear me. We are in the days of his power. Believe this when I tell you. We are in the days of his power. You see why it's good to come to the house of God? This has nothing to do with a miracle service. Once your heart is opened, defense how do I stand here and know that someone has been praying had a dream there are things you cannot fake no my dear I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ because the kind of lifting that God is bringing will surprise you I prophesy may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus I hold your passport fire let that grace come on you now take that grace now in the name of Jesus there is a grace for visibility there is a grace that can cause people to know you are there as I've released it upon this lady let that grace land on someone's destiny let the may that grace rest upon someone rest upon a business rest upon a ministry in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit by this as a prophetic contact let an anointing rest upon your life you will come and testify in Jesus name this is the lady that came here first no no hold on this this you are the one who came here you work in civil defense yes, too sir. And you too, madam? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. How long have you been there? I've been there for 10 years, sir. 10 years. What of you? 10 years, too. 10 years, two of you. Yes. 2012. Yes. Father, who is that? My friend. Why? You work in civil defense, too? I'm not, it's okay. It doesn't matter whether, I'm not saying if you work, you, this is just a word for them. It doesn't matter where you work. God is going to lift you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hold on. You, it was not too long ago you left UBA. Who is that? It was not too long ago you left UBA. UBA is a bank. Who is that person? God wants to change your story now. For those I have prayed for, you, the, the first set who came, God bless you. Please return to your seats rejoicing so that we'll hurry up now. Do you know I've not given my charge for tonight and you must hear the charge? Praise God. Faith comes by hearing. You must hear the charge. Please come. UBA. Is there someone like that? I'm not saying you are walking in UBA. You left UBA. Where, when did you leave? 17. 2017. Yes, sir. How about you? 2020. I want to pray for you. My people from civil defense, let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ father you are wiping the tears of men you are changing people's stories in the name of Jesus I decree and declare may the Lord surprise you yeah. who came from Katsina Katsina I just saw that name Katsina when you find that person please don't tell lies huh please stand here Huh? What, what's she saying? Mama, be patient. Eh? We are going to pray. This one is word of knowledge. But since you have come, um, our mother is insisting that she's not well. We, are going to, we have a section to pray for the sick. What is wrong with you, Mama? Diabetes. I have a partition. I have Okay, that's, that's all right. Let's just honor our mother. She's, she's an elderly woman. 
It's okay. Mama, you believe in the power. That, that's all right, Mama. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray for you. You came from where? From Edo State. Okay, don't worry. You see, she left a long distance, so let's, let's just forbear with her. You see, it's to tell you that people are desperate for the touch of God. Are we together now? So sometimes we're excellent people, but we need to allow... Sometimes this is an elderly woman, and as far as she's concerned, whether it's a case or not, I mean, you don't do it, but at least since she has done it, let's honor her. Father... In the name of Jesus, we pray for... No, 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 please, Mama, stand. We pray for our mother. Let there be healing. Yeah. Hypertension, diabetes, every demonic thing we cause you right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Mama, we bring you life, back pain, every pain in your body. Let it go right now. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's celebrate Mama as she goes back to her seat. Where is the person from Katsina? Katsina. Yes, sir. Mm. What do you do? I'm police officer, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. I'm not a prophet of doom. Yes, sir. But I want to pray for you because yes, I'm seeing them wanting to drive you because a pistol was missing. This is what I'm seeing. You yes, understand? Sir. I'm yes, not... Sir. Go, I'm seeing that, you, you, like, gone. Your rifle yes, sir. could not be found and you could not account for it. And this is a demonic thing because there is something God wants to do. I know you are a police officer, but there is a mighty man of God that God is training in you. Amen. Let me tell you the truth. God is, you see our police officers, there are, there are many people who will rise from the force. Write this down as a prophetic word. God is going to be, right from their academies, God will start raising mighty people mighty people so i want to pray with you you too my friend you came from katsina i came from Kogi state i resigned from uba bank okay, last you, year okay are uba people okay i'll pray for you i don't know why god said uba you see when you are walking with god just obey you it may not make sense why god there are many banks and i'm sure everybody wants what you do is whether the word applies to you directly or not you can once your faith connects to it you can return with a testimony in fact, do you know I can prophesy to someone and the person I prophesy to may not even receive the miracle because of unbelief and someone who connected by faith will come back with a testimony. That is God for you. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, my friend, I pray for you that the devil will not orchestrate an event that will indict you. There is a woman who is watching from Joss? Your son is a drunkard and you are tired of his situation. I'm seeing that mama crying right now as, as you are following. The Lord is saying I should tell you that in your lifetime, you will see God turn your son's life around. You are an elderly woman. You are watching from Joss. Your son has a problem with I think, and this thing has brought you a lot of pain. It's as if you gave birth for sorrow. Can I extend that prophecy for every mother here? In the name of Jesus Christ, for every mother here or anybody standing, any of your sons that the devil is trying to hijack, whether through drunkenness or any kind of addiction, here at this miracle service, we break the power of addiction. We break the power of addictions. We break the power of addictions. In the name of Jesus. So I pray for you, my friend. You go and return with a testimony. In Jesus' name I pray. And for those who left UBA, I don't know why the Lord asks that I bring you up out. But in Jesus' name, I stretch my hands towards you. I decree and declare. May the Lord himself, by this prophetic word, shift you to the next season of your career exploits. Whether you currently have a job or not, I'm speaking to you prophetically. Return with a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Am I wasting your time? Please don't feel bad, but there are two women. The Lord wants me to pray. Ordinarily, I would not call them to come out, but the Lord is instructing me. 
young ladies, you had, um, you lost your pregnancy and you are even here with your husband and the Lord wants me to pray for you. This is something that happened, I don't know, maybe, maybe a few months back or so and you are here with your husband, come. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because... Don't be afraid. I know you may cry, but it's a word of hope. God is not asking you to come and stand here to disgrace you, I assure you. He's asking you to come because there is balm in Gilead. This is a miracle service. I will worship him forever. Allow those who are coming to come. Husband and wife, come. To show you the kind of nonsense that the devil is trying to do over families. But we declare that the devil is a liar. There will be a massive celebration of miracle children. Don't sit back if you are in this category. God is calling you. I will worship him forever. Love him forever because. Hallelujah. Listen, the first word is a word of comfort. Please look up. The Bible says, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. You see, when God gives a prophetic word, and please, our global family, learn from this. When you are operating prophetically, number one, you have to know that prophecy brings comfort. Prophecy exhorts. This is not just a display of spiritual gifts. These people that God is bringing, you will be surprised that some of them right now, if God does not step in, their marriages may tear apart. Unfortunately, because of the kinds of cultures that we come from. For some of them, when there are prolonged issues like this, there's, there's bound to be conflict between the man and the wife. So when God calls them like this, it is number one to let them know that he's aware. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. Let me comfort and encourage everyone here. We stand as a ministry in love and partnership and in prayer with you. But let me tell you, whenever you are having any challenge as a couple, there's no such thing as pointing your fingers to say you are the cause or you are the cause. When you stood at the altar, you agreed that two of you have become one. Are we together? So if the wife wins and the husband loses, they lost. If the husband wins and the wife loses, they lost. It is only when they win together that they truly win. Let me ask the ladies if you can, as a point of contact, just place your hand on your stomach if you can, and then I want to pray for you now. Remember not the former things. The Lord God of heaven is going to bless you right now. He will make a way for you. He will be your guide. Holds you closely to his side. With love and strength, for each new day he will make a way he will make a way let me rebuke the spirits that are masquerading behind all of these demonic things father i stretch my hands right now if there is anyone here that behind these manifestations of darkness are evil spirits unclean spirits yokes, curses, all kinds of ordinances. I stretch my hands over you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. I speak to you in the name of Jesus like prophet Eli spoke over Hannah according to, ah, I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing fire move over people. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Release them now. 
Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release them now. I stand in partnership with the Holy Ghost and I declare be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. The Lord gave it as a command. We stand as a ministry and enforce it over your life. And as I'm praying for these ones, anyone in the congregation who is trusting God for the miracle of fruitfulness, parus katapakata, fire is falling. In the name of Jesus, I declare, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Whatever the medical condition is, we veto it by the word of God. And we declare, according to the time of life, go and return with your children. And for those of you trusting God for twins, in the name of Jesus, we release twins. Those of you trusting God for triplets, in the name of Jesus, we release triplets. You will think it's a joke till you stand to dedicate them here. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. There is one of you here I'm seeing a spirit always appears to you and this is something that also happened to your sister they tell you they have visions where wicked spirits appear to them who is that person in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every foul devil that will not allow you enjoy your marriage in the name of Jesus we declare a separation right now a separation right now please return back to your seat rejoicing Hallelujah. Hmm. Koinonia. You are here and your business is not working at all. I'm not, I don't mean you are rising, you are managing. It's like there is an attack. I want you to leave your seat and run and come and stand here. God wants to surprise you. Please listen to what I'm saying before you come. Let's be orderly, let's be obedient. You will not be down. Accept this anointing. Let me tell you the truth. You, what will happen? You will marvel and wonder at the lifting power that is in the name of Jesus. If you are, if you are in any of the overflows, just move to your LEDs. You may not be able to come here. Those outside, you can just move to your LEDs and connect by faith. Don't say it does not matter. This is why God has organized this to attend to the issues of people. hallelujah make sure that whatever business you are involved with is not a business that kills steals and destroys are we together yes we are not going to waste our time praying for people who are doing demonic things we, we, it's important that your value that what you are doing is adding value to people and not something that is destroying lives but I want to release an anointing upon you you will be surprised honestly are you ready father you have anointed us for this purpose there are people here who have cried there are people right now as I speak you have gone down like it's not you are owing to the millions tens of millions hundreds of millions it's not business that will bring you out it's the prophetic that will bring you out I move from left to my right in the name of Jesus at the count of three receive a baptism of the grace for excellence one two three take that grace now take that grace now Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release you. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Listen. Every business that has died here, hear ye the word of the Lord. Between now and the next three months, I command come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. 
anyone here who is in debt, you are owing banks, you are owing financial institutions, you are owing and there is no way you can come out. I call upon Ebenezer, the God who helps men, and I declare unto you, come out of that financial situation. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? I'm speaking to you again. In the name of Jesus, if there are wrong people in your business, I take them out now. And the right people who need to join your chariot, I bring them in prophetically. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. I place an anointing on these hands. Go and excel. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. The power of God is coming on someone, but it is not for you. I'm saying that it's for your brother. But you are only receiving from him he's not been promoted for nearly 10 years this is what i'm seeing he has been working i don't know where he's working but there's not been promotion at all do you know what it means to be in a place and you're just marking time there i don't know who that person is whether you are here in the main auditorium or outside but in the name of jesus you don't have to come out the son of the living god i decree and declare that the anointing of the spirit lands upon your life and let there be supernatural pro promotion for your brother in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ mercy mercy i'm hearing the name mercy mercy please sit down please sit down koinonia sit down for a minute mercy who is mercy mommy some of you have been coming out for everything make sure that make sure that please faith 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 does not function in disobedience listen faith does not function faith in one word i have taught you is obedience it doesn't mean you have to come out to receive some people can even come out here i've told you and see go back and nothing happens so please let's be orderly so that it doesn't mean that once a case is mentioned whether it concerns you or not mercy if you are standing in for someone please go back make sure you are the mercy yourself hallelujah I want to deliver a family of mercy from witchcraft. Hmm. This thing has tied people in that family down. Sincere people, but they cannot rise. When I begin to minister deliverance, one of the things that God is going to be taking from families is this demonic cloud of limitation that does not allow people to rise. It looks like the moment someone begins to rise, something just stops him. I will first pray for them, but that prayer is going to extend to everyone. Mercy. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands now. The Lord, the, this is why God brought you out here. There is a mighty deliverance going to happen. Father, every covenant that is connected to ancestry or any legal access that Satan has over the family of mercy that gives him authorization, I come by the blood and I declare right now, let that yoke be broken now, broken now, broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be delivered right now. Yokes of ancestry, spirits of backwardness that keeps taking people back. Be delivered now. Please help our mother. Be delivered now. Hear me, for all of you who have come forward, I push you prophetically. Go forward. Go forward. And as I'm praying for them, I'm declaring it over someone. Go forward. Go forward in your life. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
like people will say you take one step forward and then you take 10 backwards that is not the destiny of the believer in Christ for the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light is that in your Bible that shineth brighter more and more I'm saying it again to those of you here in the name of Jesus whatever has held you down I prophesy to you go forward in Jesus name we pray please return back to your seat rejoicing return back to your seat rejoicing return back to your seat rejoicing hallelujah let me take one scripture then we'll begin to minister deliverance and then with healing hallelujah I was going to give us a charge I will still do it for a few minutes on the power of expectation please write the word is very important because that is the basis for the believers faith your faith is only built on the word the power of expectation what is expectation I wrote here a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen expectation is a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen that's what we call expectation that something desired something anticipated will happen in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24 very quickly Proverbs 10 24 the Bible tells us that the desire of the righteous shall be granted that the desire of the righteous redeemed by the blood of the lamb that one of the benefits that comes with being in Christ is access to your desires granted desires of course that are in line with the will of God in Mark 11 and verse 24 Mark 11 24 Jesus was teaching on faith and here's what he had to say therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them i like the amplify versions rendition of verse 24 because it now brings perspective to it and it says for this reason i am telling you whatever you ask for in prayer in fact one of the amplified expression says that is it is consistent to god's will it says believe that it is granted unto you and you will get it this this expression of amplified says most believers please listen most people not know that expectation is a law it's not just when you do not have expectation you can cripple the hand of God from being made manifest in your life there is the law of expectation and that expectation is very very powerful hallelujah in first John chapter 5 I believe from verse 14 and 15 Apostle John in his epistle said and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will it says he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatever we, whatsoever we ask it says we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him so God responds to the expectations of the saints this is very very important the Bible is full of men and women who communicated desperations and expectations in the Bible and returned with testimonies and the Bible is also full of others who trivialized the whole idea of expectations even to their detriment many believers may wonder why you can be in such a strong apostolic prophetic atmosphere and yet surprisingly walk back with nothing because usually the problem is your expectation let me show you two examples in Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 very quick reading Acts chapter 3 and verse 1 the Bible says Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour verse 2 a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb the Bible says who was carried that they laid him daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful 
So he would ask arms from the people there, verse 3. He says, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an arms. And then the Bible says, verse 4, that Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. Now, verse 5, the Bible says, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. You can give heed to people in sarcasm. Well, let me see if they, I can get one or two things. But the Bible says he paid rapt attention, expecting to receive something from them. Hallelujah. And then you know the end of the story, down to verse 11. The Bible says at the end of it, the man was, was healed, and it was something that the people wondered. When you read verse 11, the Bible says that the people were greatly wondering. It became a sign and a wonder because of expectation. Example number two. I like this one. In Mark chapter 10, I think the, the story begins from verse 46. This is a popular story of blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says that they came to Jericho, reading to 52, and as he went out um, of Jericho with his disciples, follow closely, a great number of people followed them. Then the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway begging, 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, expectation. And he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 48 now. The Bible says, many charged him that you should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 49. The Bible says, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he called thee. Now, watch a very interesting conversation that transpired. And he casting away his garment. In other words, I know I will never have to need this garment again. And he threw it away. The Bible says he rose and came to Jesus. Now, Jesus answered and said to him, What will thou that I do unto thee? That would look like a, a very sarcastic question. What would you think a blind man would be desiring from you? It would be a costly assumption to assume that the man wanted his eyes to be open. Jesus looks like a, at a blind man who had already stretched his energy in shouting. And instead of him to just lay hands on him, he says, what will thou that I should do unto thee? And the man said, the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. The man at Gate Beautiful was not wanting healing. He wanted money. Is that true? The Bible says he was begging for arms. In other words, the apostles, I don't need to rise. Just give me money to take care of myself. Keep the scripture there, 50 now. The Bible says, verse 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith demonstrated to your expectation had made thee whole and the bible says immediately he received his sight and followed jesus in the way i like the end of that story he did not receive his sight and he, then he went back he received his sight and followed jesus jesus told him go your way but he followed the way go you receive your sight and go back but he said no now that I've received the sight, I want to follow the one who gave me the sight. Are we together? So there are many examples where people opened up their hearts to be expectant. Listen, this is a very powerful law. By the grace of God, having ministered to people through the years, I have seen how people trivialize expectations to their detriment. You will be surprised that in such a powerful atmosphere as this, there are people who may just come based on invitation or just based on the ritual of honoring a ministry's program and they sit down, they celebrate, they enjoy, they laugh, they jot down key points and go back receiving nothing because of the absence or the bankruptcy of expectations. Now, let me show you 
the danger of not having an expectation. Acts chapter 12, please. For sake of time, we'll read verse 1 to 5, then we'll jump to verse 12. This was a story about um, Peter when Peter was bound in prison. It says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church too. He says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3, he says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4, he says, and when he had apprehended him, Peter now, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, watch this. Peter therefore was kept in prison. He says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So the church came together and they began to pray, Peter must not die. Lord, rescue Peter. And you would think because of that dissipation of energy, they had expectation. Let's go to verse 12 for the sake of time. When you read from verse 6 to 11, the angel of the Lord comes and then brings Peter out. We've read it many times here. Verse 12, watch this. And when he had considered the thing, the Bible says, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. That was where the prayer was going on, whose surname was Mark, where they were gathered together praying. Reading to 16, 13 now, the Bible says, and Peter knocked <laughs> at the door of the gate. A damsel came to hearken to him named Rhoda, 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter had stood before the gate. Don't forget, this was the man they were praying for, verse 15. And they said to her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And they said, it is his angel. Can you imagine that? Verse 16, but Peter continued knocking and when they had opened the door, they saw him and were astonished. That means while all that prayer was going on, prayer changed, Peter, you must go out of that prison. They did not even believe. There was no expectation that their prayer request came to their door and knocked. They opened it and closed it back and said, let's keep praying. That's how many believers are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you will turn my life around. You will change my story and yet there is no expectation. You would see these people praying, a prayer group, a prayer chain, praying in the house of Mary and yet Peter delivered by an angel in response to their prayer. He now came to the door. It was not a vision. Peter was knocking. The damsel came, opened the door, shut it for gladness, returned back and told them, Stop praying, the answer has come. They say, no, we don't believe it. Just let him keep knocking. Now, if Peter went back in anger, they would conclude from that prayer meeting that God does not answer prayers. Could it be that there are people here, whilst you came here and singing, dancing, celebrating, shouting amen, but the truth is that you do not have definite expectations. If the Lord Jesus were to stand on this pulpit right now, this stage, he would ask you the same question he asked Blind Bartimeo. What do you want me to do for you? God, I'm tired of my issues. That is not an expectation. That is lamentation. Remember, that's what happened in John chapter 5 to the man at Bethesda. Jesus said, what would I do for you? He started complaining, I have no man. That's not what Jesus asked him. What do you desire? That is the reason why you see we guide people by writing prayer expectations. It's a way of helping to articulate your expectations. Lord, I am trusting you to open a financial door. I am trusting that in the name of Jesus Christ, this and that would happen. Many people do not have expectations. And it's the reason why it looks like God does not reveal his outstretched arm towards them. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Paul admonishes us in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, 
saying that without faith it is impossible to please him it says for he that cometh to god we've dealt with this in this house the bible says he must come believing number one that god is meaning he exists and then number two that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words you come here whilst you are seated celebrating what god is doing already there must be a definite expectation within your heart whether you are following uh, online you are following here on site across all the overflows outside you must make up your mind that i am not just here to waste my time i have expectations and you see an expectation that cannot be articulated is no expectation at all what do you want god to do for you general lifting there's no such thing as that that statement already is both a sign of spiritual ignorance and then the fact that you are not prepared to receive anything. Are we together now? Yes. So faith, I wrote here, is expectation that is based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. That faith is expectation based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. It's impossible to say you have Bible faith without expectation because faith must be connected to an object, expectation. There must be something definite. Hallelujah. If you're with me, shout amen. amen. Tonight, many of us have come and sadly many are here and even though you've seen the power of god move already there are many people who are without expectations and the lord put it in my heart as we step into this second session of the miracle service that without an expectation sadly you may return back with no testimony at all because expectation is a law if it is bible faith it must be connected to specific things and specific areas where you want god to visit you I wrote a list of things here that represent many people's desires and expectations. Number one, marital issues. Number two, diseases and sicknesses, the things that plague people, that necessitate an expectation. Three, financial situations of all kinds. Number four, demonic oppressions. Five, the need for restoration. Six, direction of all kinds. breakthroughs deliverances from all kinds of yokes every time you see a people gathered unto God like this these usually are the issues that represent their pain that represent their expectations and until you are able to articulate it you look at anything in your life that does not reveal or reflect the glory of God you now connect Lord, I trust you and I release my faith that this situation must come to an end. For instance, I mentioned by the Spirit the case of people maybe having financial issues here. You saw the number of people who came. I was very impressed. It is a terrible thing to not know what is wrong with you. It is a terrible thing to not even know what you need. Are we together now? That's why the Holy Spirit guides us when we come. So that you will know when your word comes. And so that you will know when to receive and to manifest your testimonies. Your testimony will not pass you by. Yeah. I wrote finally here that every genuine expectation is expressed in words and action. Please write. Every genuine expectation is expressed in words and actions expectations that cannot be expressed in words and in action is not expectation at all every genuine expectation is expressed in words words there means you must be able to pray it and you must be able to take the necessary steps as required for victory every genuine expectation now imagine those who were just healed and delivered just like that did you know that if their word came as it came and they did not come out, maybe they just sat down saying, well, it's none of my business. 
they, you'll be surprised that with the power of God moving up and down, it will pass them by because they did not, God will not force his power on you. I hope you know that. I'm saying this because when we begin to pray and we begin to minister deliverance and minister healing and so on and so forth, and then more importantly, your prayer request, no matter how accurate God has granted the grace, we see in part, we prophesy in part. This is why everybody is given the liberty to write your prayer request. Please let me encourage you. Don't get so used to just writing and submitting your prayer request. It is a very powerful tool. It is a way of guiding you by the Spirit to clearly articulate your expectations. There are things you may not have the courage to say here. Imagine how embarrassing it will be if I call you and I say, tell us everything that is your expectation. Some will be personal. There are things that is between you and God alone. That's why we write it and we pray over it here and from here it is burnt. It is nobody's business what you have written. Are we together? That means you should not spare when writing the things you are trusting God for. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, you are a man of God and ministry is not working. No doors opening, souls are not being saved. You write it. Father is supernatural breakthrough in ministry. Write it clearly. I have a son. What is his name? John. John does not seem to be a disciplined gentleman, write it. Supernatural restoration for John. I'm showing you how to prepare. You write it both in your heart and then on paper. So that when we begin to pray, as the power of God is coming, it is resting upon your expectation and turning it into a testimony. You can return back and know that this happened to me. And you can return back to testify, I wrote this. Jesus did this. Look what my life has become now. When Dave was here taking the testimony, he said there is before and after, but that only happens when there is an expectation. Is someone learning? Yeah. When I pray preparing for the miracle service or any other service for that matter, I have expectations myself as a man of God, even for the meeting. Some are revealed by the Spirit. Some come as my sincere desire to see God's people blessed. And these expectations are reflected in my, prayer, my prayers as I prepare for the meeting. Lord, bless your people. For instance, two major expectations is healing and financial breakthrough. This has been my major expectation and my prayers for God's people. Because this is what I have discerned that Satan is using to cripple his body. These two things. One, sicknesses of all kinds, extending to demonic attacks. Number two, financial problems. You will be surprised to see how many believers are stranded financially. And let me tell you the truth, for as long as God has anointed us, but I'm not somebody, when I am I'm dealing with issues that help believers to rise, I'm not ashamed of it. When you are blessed and you rise, it is a joy to Jesus, to the purposes of God, and even to me. For as long as you are under this ministry, you will not be poor. Let me tell you the truth. It's true. You will learn the ways of the kingdom, but you will also receive the engracings and the prophetic backing that it takes to rise. Are we together? Healing and finances. These were my major areas. Doesn't mean we'll touch on other areas, but these two areas. That means by the time we begin to minister in this second session, when you hear me speaking and declaring over your finances, shout a loud amen and receive it with all your heart. Don't be like the foolish man who stood at the gate of Samaria and, and was trying to mock the prophet Elisha that even if God will open the heavens, might this happen? And he said, you will see it, but you will not eat of it. God is changing the stories of men. God is surprising people. You see people come and they are testifying here. Healings and even financial miracles. That is not all God can do. He will respond to your expectation. For someone you are here praying, saying, Lord, I cannot have five boys, ten boys, and none of them has risen. As their mother, I'm still feeding them age 40, age 50, age 30. That that demonic oppression must stop. 
and God comes to you. For someone, maybe there's no peace in your home. You love the Lord, but it's as if there is, there is war always happening in your home. Father, I need peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Bring peace to my home. And you'll be surprised. While you are here, the husband and wife can be here. And the fire of God just falls upon them. An altar call is made. And you'll see your husband coming to give his life to Christ. And that begins the journey of total transformation. Maybe you're a man of God who loves God, but there's almost zero anointing on your life and your ministry. You struggle on the pulpit and it looks like God did not call you. You can bring that to an end. The anointing is transferable. Graces are transferable. Apostle, I'm here, I love the Lord, but I don't even know what I'm doing on earth. I'm just escorting men around the corridors of their destiny. I need to find my place. Do you have it as an expectation? An expectation is more than a wish. A wish is a careless desire with no consequences, whether it is actualized or not. An expectation comes with dogged faith attached to it. Lord, I'm, I'm committing your integrity on this matter. Archbishop Benson, in a host of blessed memory, said if your faith says yes, that God would not say no. Because if it is Bible faith, it will be based on his will. So there is no reason why God should say no. Are we together? Apostle, I'm tired. I've been married 10 years, 15 years, no child. Well, I'm sure that God will open my womb. That kind of, that, that is a careless, you know, very, very shabby wish. It will not happen that way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. This is my miracle service. I connect and I declare that in the name of Jesus, by next miracle service, I'm already pregnant. I release my faith. You believe. And while you are saying it, the devil will be mocking you and saying, is that not what you said last miracle service? Has it happened now? You need to learn how to forget about the devil when you are dealing with God. Don't allow him come and interrupt your conversation with God. You are talking to the king of kings, the lord of lords, the creator of the ends of the earth. Don't let Satan come and interrupt your discussion. Father, I know in the name of Jesus that I can complete this house. I've begun this building project as it is now. I may be stranded, but in the name of Jesus, you have told me that this year of open doors, that in Jesus' name, I will dedicate my own house. While he's saying it, here comes the devil. He will whisper all kinds of things and say, just to remind you for the records that you lost your job last month, and just to let you know that right now as it is, they've increased the school fees of your children. Before you know it, you will take your attention from Jesus Christ and you are listening to the devil. And at the end of it, your, your prayer request will make you, you will just be reduced from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the flesh. How do you know you have come back to the realm of the flesh? What you were once confident upon will look like stupidity. You know you have been reduced back to that realm. Lord, I'm trusting you for supernatural partnership for my ministry. And then eventually you say, ah, but use your sense. Who will come and give you one million, 10 million, 100 million? The devil has succeeded in bringing you down. The Bible says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit. That to be spiritually minded, it says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.